Hi class, we're in my room. It's very messy and there's laundry over my all over my bed, but it's the most quiet place in the house. Um, I'm going to, we're going to fill out the timeline uh, for the environmental science uh, worksheet and we're going to go over the history of scouting um, as far as environmental science goes. So I'm going to be reading and showing you the answers to the, um, for the timeline so you can fill it in as we go. Alrighty. Trying to figure out how to do this. <laughs> okay, the roots of environmental science. American Indians used forests and other environmental resources for centuries before European settlers arrived on the continent. In the Pacific Northwest, tribes used forest materials to make cedar houses, boats, and clothing. In the Northeast and Upper Midwest, they built birch bark canoes. Forests also were tremendous sources of food, both from plants and from wildlife. At times, tribes overused certain forested areas. Sometimes they intentionally burned forests to clear land for cultivation or to make it easier to pursue game. If a forest became overused or too heavily damaged to support a tribe, the group would move on and the forest left alone would recover. Okay, so that first uh, box is 1500s as Native Americans moved so that the land, land could recover. Okay, as more and more European settlers arrived in North America, their need for natural resources grew. They killed wildlife, cut trees, and contaminated the water near the settlements. When the pressure on natural resources in a settled area grew too great, people moved westward and began the cycle again. Settlers believed they could always move farther west to find more space and more resources. There's a nice picture. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move this down so you can start copying it. But try to pay attention to while I'm reading. Early on, however, some settlers realized that the abundant natural resources on this new land were not limitless. In 1626, Plymouth Colony passed a law to control the cutting and sale of timber on colony lands. People in Newport, Rhode Island agreed in 1639 to restrict deer hunting to six months a year. In Pennsylvania in 1861, oops, 1681, William Penn decreed that one acre must be left forested for every five acres of forest that were cleared. Okay. So you can see there, I have, uh, you can't read my writing, 1626, Plymouth, they had the timber laws. Uh, 1639, Rhode Island, they, they had deer hunting restrictions. They could only hunt six months out of the year. And in 1681, Pennsylvania, for every five acres cleared, you had to leave one forested. Got it? Okay, so it doesn't look like nothing happened in the 1700s. Okay, so here we go. Nice shadow on there. Okay. By the 1830s, people such as artist George Caitlin and naturalist Henry, Henry David Thoreau were writing about the need to preserve some of the unique environments of North America in national parks. People dedicated to environmental protection and wildlife conservation founded groups such as American Forests in 1875, the Appalachian Mountain Club in 1876, the New York Audubon Society in 1886, the Boone and Crockett Club in 1887, the Sierra Club in 1892, the American Scenic and Historic Preservation Society in 1895, and the Isaac Walton League of America. That was in 1922, but we'll say they were in 1800s. Okay. That's still, there's some more. So, okay, we'll keep on going with 1800s before I go. Oh. Government management of special areas can be traced back to the creation of the first national park, Yellowstone, set aside in 1872. Congress passed the Creative Act in 1891, designating much of the nation's publicly owned forests as protected forest reserves. 
The Forest Reserve Act of 1891 followed, changing the forest reserves to national forests and charging their managers with improving and protecting the nation's long-term supply of wood and water. The Bureau of Forestry became the Forest Service in 1905 when the forest reserves were transferred to the Department of Agriculture. In 1916, Congress established the National Park Service. The Park, the park Service's mission is to preserve national, natural and cultural resources for the enjoyment, education, and inspiration of current and future generations. Okay, so, oops, sorry. Down here on the 1800s, that's when the conservation groups were formed. Um, 1872, the first national park was Yellowstone. 1891, the Creative Act uh, protected the forest. I mean, we also had the Forest Reserve Act that same year. Okay, and then the 1900s, we got into them a little bit. Uh, so far, we've read about 1905, the, fo the Forest Service. 1916, National Park Service. We haven't read about Earth Day yet. Let's see. In the decades that followed, forward-thinking agency personnel and a conservation movement made up of dedicated citizens established the idea of protecting some forests and other wilderness areas as reminders of the way they were before humans intervened and of balancing the use of public lands for recreation, timber, and biological resources. The Multiple Use Sustained Yield Act of 1960 officially established multiple use management of the forest. Okay, the Bureau of Land Management, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the Fish and Wildlife Service, and Natural Resources Conservation Service, and other public agencies also strive to manage public lands that fall within their administrative boundaries. State and local agencies oversee smaller acreage of public lands, private landowners, with forested properties from large forest product companies to families with a few acres of trees around their homes have a stake in proper management of forest resources too. Okay. <laughs> During the late 1800s and early 1900s, people began to speak about human activities that were causing serious environmental problems, such as air and water pollution. American zoologist William T. Hornaday wrote about the need to protect wildlife in North America. In 1907, a scientific study by M.C. Marsh showed how fish were hurt by industrial waste released into water sources. In 1962, Rachel Carson published Silent Spring, a book that discussed the dangers of, to the environment from using the pesticide DDT. Carson and other people who wrote about the environmental effects of human activities helped make the public aware of environmental concerns. This public awareness led to the designation of April 22nd as Earth Day. There's Earth Day. The first day in 19 the first Earth Day in 1970 sparked an environmental movement in the United States. As a result, the US Environmental Protection Agency (EPA), the Council on Environmental Quality, and many state and local Environmental agencies were established. Today, many laws protect our air, water, land, and wildlife resources. So I didn't say anything about the 2000s, so I just put we had lots of laws, because I'm sure there were lots of laws passed in um, the 2000s. So let's go up here and go through this slowly, make sure you got it all. Okay, so I, I think I'm going to do the Boy Scout history on a different video.